give you an order of magnitude field for this. The wiring, we have uh, enough wiring to do typically a network for two skyscrapers. We have an informal measure of, of how much weight these things can take. We call it, we put a load of one gram on these things. You know, most people think one gram, except you haven't seen Graham Wright walking around. He's um, six foot something, he weighs 300 and some odd pounds, and he dangles from the cable. And the best test we could find was me, 310 pound, I'll hang from the cable. If the cable keeps working and doesn't fall down from the roof, it's been tested to one gram. What makes Interop happen is the synergy of all of the people coming together to basically provide connectivity for all of the exhibitors. Every exhibitor in principle is connected. Uh, we encourage them, we assist them to use the network in interesting ways to show their customers that they're connected. The, the network this size would normally be done in a corporation uh, anywhere from six months to multiple years. One of the projects that I worked on that would be similar would be Pac Bell and that project took about three and a half years. Networks should be implemented very quickly. Why? Because if the deployment of the network is stretched out over a period of years, which frequently happens in a corporate setting, the requirements change. By the time the network's built, it's already obsolete. We design the network and implement it in a period of less than six months. And then we tear it down, we redesign it, and redeploy it in less than six months again. This, uh... This diagram probably, uh, let's say it changed 11 times that I know of just in the last four weeks. The network design changed more than that. Uh, the amount of routing and bridging equipment that we have in it would typically be used by a major corporation in perhaps 15 or 20 cities. Uh, and that, of course, is um, all installed in a period of about four days, operated for three days, and torn down in two days. Uh, in order to do that, it's not just a matter of technical know-how, it's a matter of logistical know-how of having a small team of really very highly dedicated, competent individuals. So it's kind of like a family setting in one way with a professional goal. We have some of the Dallas Cowboys of networking, and they're that good. Uh, and they work for us because this is the best game in town. We provide the world's largest playpen for networkers. The ribs which run down each aisle are basically bundles of twisted pair uh, wire, which is copper, fiber runs, or in some cases we might get a special request uh, to put in a piece of wire just between one booth and another for a specific demonstration. The backbone runs the total distance across the hall and connects the ribs to the network. The backbone is where all of the, the network really comes together. So you can think of it as the common ground for all of the network traffic. The uh, super freeway connecting everything together. All along the wall here, you can see the crews are pulling the backbone, tying together the fiber, the copper, and getting it ready to fly. One of the primary runs, or ribs, is from the knock to the backbone, the network operations center, which sits up above the floor. And the connections start and end in that area for troubleshooting. So most of the cable runs from the knock to the backbone. We're actually wiring the, the knock or network operation center. This is where we'll perform all of the management for the entire show network throughout Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday while the vendors are doing their demonstrations. Uh, the cabinets that you see over behind you are where all of the cables will come in to connect 
us to the entire show floor so that we can monitor what goes on on the show floor. Okay. The network does take a lot of care and feeding during the show because um, I mean we're using standard protocols and standard equipment, but we stress it a lot, and we tend to get new pieces of software from people, and it breaks. So it takes a lot of babysitting to keep it alive. The next room is what we usually call the NSA, or Network Spy Atrium, uh, where we actually put devices that can snoop the, the real low-level data on the cable. So when we do have problems, we can find out exactly what's going on at a very low level. From the knock, we get onto the backbone and we go to a number of pedestals which have routers in them. The routers are the main path on and off the backbone. Routers are the devices that we connect to the network to actually let data pass between different physical cables. There are a number of ways you can, you can actually perform that task. Uh, what we've done is actually taken a number of rows of booths each one being uh, its own set of... Oh! Thank you! Sorry! <laughs> It, I'm really sorry about it, that. It's own set of 1061 cable runs. Uh, we, we call that a rib. We've taken a number of ribs and bridged them together using one type of technology to form a subnetwork. And from there, cutting down the number of, of routers and router ports that we needed, routers being very expensive. This should be very important when we get to doing an interop plus networld, or networld plus interop, uh, because the number of booths is just going to be enormous. We then use routers to interconnect the subnetworks so that traffic becomes isolated to different parts of the, of the convention center. Only the traffic that has to pass between different parts of the convention center will actually do so. If it's going all the way to the outside world, it goes back to the knock, from the knock, outside. I feel like Bob Villa in this old house. <laughs> I believe the military originated interoperability, and it was bullet exchange. If you know, you have a, an Italian on one side and a Frenchman on the other, and they each hand you a bullet, you hope that the thing is going to work when you put it in your rifle, uh, or you collectively get shot. The interop was originally a um, technical meeting. It was by invitation only for people who were in the, the technical developers. There was no marketing or any, any of that sort of thing. And the trade show part, just sort of grew and grew and grew. I mean, we call them the TCPIP interoperability conferences. I actually believe that a guy named Craig Partridge at BBN, you know, called the interop the first time. You know, on the phone, he says, Dan, I'll see you at interop. And I went, oh, that's a slick name. When the show started many years ago, well, five or six, almost Last seven year. now, uh, everything was either the old coax style Ethernet and then growing into the 10 base T Ethernet. I mean, now we rely on the fiber extensively to the point that in addition to using fiber for FDDI networks and the FDDI backbone, we're also using Ethernet, Ethernet technology over fiber to get the distances required. From the farthest point on the rib to the backbone already exceeds twisted pair uh, specifications. So you need to convert it to something else that has a longer transmission capability and that's why we use fiber here. There's certain companies which do a lot of networking amongst their, between their booths, between the various companies, and to the outside world. There's other companies which don't generate any traffic that touches anyone else. Um, and we don't consider them to be in the spirit of interop because the whole idea here is, is you gotta make your equipment talk to one another, because what, is, consider a telephone, how, what value would be the fanciest telephone in the world if it couldn't talk to another telephone on the other side of the country? They really got to interoperate. Right. Dan has been trying to figure out what interoperability is. We've been asking him to tell us, but... Oh, it's uh, Lego block computing. It's simple. Everything connects to everything and works. Cheap. I, I get to see here if it works or not before I recommend my company to buy it. Yeah. So you get to break somebody else's network instead of your own <laughs> and then build it right. So that's really the challenge. It's somebody's network that they can play with, try things. If it doesn't work, it's not a, a black mark on their professional record. We simply tear it down, start over. And that's the fun. It's like there's always a, a slightly taller mountain to be climbed. And only we get to, to bring the mountain here. South Australia around here. We're bound to South Australia. All the way a rolling king to me, heave away to me, haul away. All the way you'll hear me sing. We're bound to South Australia. There's no
rib running out here. 